Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own rouleau. This is a tube of fabric. It's usually about a quarter inch on each side. And what it's used for is for creating spaghetti straps, button loops, ties, just basically creating like a string of fabric for you to use in creating your garments or in any other craft that you want to use. So let's get started and see how we make the rouleau. To get our rouleau started, the first thing we need to do is to cut our strips. Now it really depends on you on how long you need your strip to be, whether it's going to be a spaghetti strap or it's going to be a button loop. But the thing that I like to do is always cut out my strip so that it's on the bias. So I have a small piece of fabric here. This is only about the size of a fat quarter, which is 18 by 22, 22 and a half. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I've squared off all the edges, so I'm going to use my rotary cutter, but you can also use scissors for this if you don't have a rotary cutter. I'm going to take my corner here and I'm going to bring this edge to this edge over here. Now, like I said, the length can be whatever length you want it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and cut one strip here and I always like to have it be an inch. Now, of course, since we brought this over, we have a fold here. So if I'm just going to do one strip, I can go ahead and lay my ruler on here so that I'm cutting at a half inch. So then when I take this off and open it up so it's no longer folded, it'll be a one inch strip by whatever length this is. Now, if you, of course, you need a longer length, you can go ahead and cut several of these strips and stitch them together. Why I cut them on the bias is because I want them to have a little bit of a stretch. If you're actually going to do a long strip of it, go ahead and check out our other tutorial on making your own bias tape and I'll show you exactly how to stitch those together. I'm just doing one strip, so I'm not going to show you how to do that in this tutorial, but it's actually very easy to do. So let me just line this up the half inch mark because I'm just going to take one strip and then I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut right along my ruler here. Now of course if you're going to go ahead and do it with scissors you can just use your fabric marker and draw a little dotted line and then you can use your scissors to cut that out so you get your one inch strip by however length you need it to be. If your strips end up with points like this you can go ahead and cut off the points and square the edges because we want a nice flat end. Take your strip right side facing up and we're going to bring one raw edge to the other. So we're folding it in half with the right side on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and pin all along this raw edge to hold it together so we can go ahead and stitch it. Now normally when I say sew a quarter inch seam allowance, you're stitching a quarter inch from the raw edge. In this particular case, you really want to make sure that you're sewing a quarter inch from the fold line. So here's my fold line here on the quarter inch line and then I'm stitching a quarter inch away from that. So your raw edges are going to be much smaller than that. I'm using a regular whisk stitch. Don't forget to back stitch and I'm stitching all the way down the strip. Again, a quarter inch from the fold, not from the raw edge. After you finish stitching your strip, what you're going to do is check your seam allowance. So that is going to be on the raw edge side. So the, from the raw edge to the stitching should be about an eighth of an inch because we want to make sure that we're going to be able to turn this right side out easily. And if your seam allowance is too big, it's going to be really hard to get through the tube. So if you need to, go ahead and trim the seam allowance. Next we have to turn this right side out. So there are a couple of different options you can do. The first one I'm going to show you is using a loop turner. So that's what this is. It's long and skinny. It has a hook on one side and then it has this little grippy thing on the end there. So to use this, I'm going to put the loop turner in, the side with the hook, through the tube until I get to the other side like that. So I'm going to open up the hook and I want this side to just hook on the folded side of the end of the loop. 
Now of course you want to make sure that you don't get too close to this edge because it will rip through if it's too close. So maybe about an eighth of an inch down you're going to make sure that you get this hook through. So I'm just going to you kind of have to fill with your finger in order to do it. Once you have your latch through the fabric, you can go ahead and let it close. It should want to kind of close automatically there. And then we're gently going to start pulling the fabric through. Now the first part, it's usually a little difficult to start, but you'll see it start to bunch up there. Don't pull it too hard because you ripped your fabric. And then I just kind of help it through by pulling up the fabric around the part that's bunching. You'll see it'll slowly start to go in there. And once it's like this first part of the seam allowance gets in there, then it should go pretty easily. It's always just a little tough to get it started though. So I kind of push it in there, make it a little bit easier, and then kind of pull it. And again, don't pull it too hard. Once your hook comes out on the other side, you can go ahead and remove it and now we can just grab the fabric and finish turning it right side out. If you're worried about the ends fraying, you can go ahead and apply a little bit of liquid sealant to that and that should keep it, keep it from fraying anymore. If you don't have a loop turner, you can still turn it right side out. And to do that, you're going to need a very large needle. I have the largest in my collection and some heavy duty thread. So this is a little bit thicker than the all purpose because I want to make sure that it's not going to break as I'm turning it right side out. So you're going to take one end of the strip and here's the side with the fold. I'm going to go again about an eighth of an inch right in the middle of the fold and come out through the middle at the end here. See how that knot stops it? I made sure I did a really big knot. So again, this needle is only piercing this folded part and then coming right through the middle. I'm then going to take my needle and it's going to go back through the loop eye first. So I'm not going point first, I'm going eye first. It just seems a little safer this way. And then I'm going to bring it all the way to the end. So all I'm doing is I'm holding the needle with this hand and I'm gathering the fabric, grabbing the needle with this hand here, letting go and pulling the fabric and it'll slowly move down my strip. Be careful, don't prick yourself with the needle. All right, we're getting to the end here. Okay. Once the needle comes out, you can go ahead, remove the needle, because we don't need to deal with that anymore. And now I have the string, or my thread, still attached to this end, so it's just the same kind of thing. So I'm going to gently pull it, and it's going to start to gather on this end. And just like before, you kind of have to help it get started. So it'll start to gather, and then I just kind of pull over the knot to try to get it get it going. Now that your rouleau is done, what can you do with it? Well, there's actually a number of things. First of all, we can use this to create spaghetti straps. You can use it to create button loops. It makes really great as button loops. It can just be a tie as in a corset. You can actually use it to make fabric bows like this one. Or you can use it as an extra embellishment, like I've done here. Obviously, if it's longer, you can do a little bit more with it, but you can pin it to your fabric, stitch it on, and it can be a design in a pillow or a wall hang or your garment if you wish. And that's all there is to it, to making your own rouleau. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.